Now, uh, this is a quotation uh, from a patient of mine. I'm constantly accusing my boyfriend of looking at other women and thinking of other women while we make love. Recently, I gave my boyfriend a gift certificate for a massage, but I wanted to be in the room watching everything that happened. When I found out we could not be in the same room, I cancelled the appointment. After hearing him complain about his back, I rescheduled the massage. And then after the massage, I yelled at him for having some other woman's hands all over him. I'm thinking of leaving him because he has been tainted by someone else." Unquote. Do you see? Now the question is how to compensate for all these events. Grief, disappointed love, anger. We have the rubric horrible things affect her profoundly. How to compensate all those things leading to the core delusion? As a reaction, as a compensation, and also as a part of the origin of her core delusion, Lacus possesses a strong ego. In haughtiness and in pride, she is not much behind Platinum like a podium. And those two are the most outspokenly arrogant people in Materia Medica. And it is interesting also that the triggers of platinum like a podium are vexation, mortification, and disappointment. Something they have in common with Lacazis. Though their reaction of an assault on their ego is quite different. Platinum, for example, depending on the state she is in, eventually chooses one of her extreme outlets, sex or religion. Like a podium often maintains his quest for power, attempting to remain at the top of the social ladder through defiance, cynicism, hard work, and of course that false arrogance as he exhibits an almost dictatorial behavior. But Lacazis wants to be successful above all in relationships and her career, in the art order. Relationships stand first, career stands second. Like a podium, more often a man, um, I mean a masculine character, you can prescribe it of course to a woman, but it is a masculine energy, and like a podium sees success as being at the apex of his career, just like Nox Vomica, just like Sulphur. But Lacazis places the greatest importance on her career only by default. When she is frustrated sexually and her husband cannot match her intensity of possessive love, Lacazis turns to the career. So for Lacazis it is more a perception than reality of not being loved, but her jealousy makes it incapable to maintain her mask in the relationship. Thus, the delusions of all these remedies will take different forms. And if we speak in terms of the traditional Chinese medicine, we can say that Lacus belongs to the fire element, and Lacus is prone to more hysterical heart love delusions, expressions of a strong anima. Well, the snake is a symbol of the anima. And we have some heart delusions. Delusion she is beautiful, delusion she is going to have a heart attack, something which has to do with the heart. Like a podium, on the other hand, belongs to the old liver element, and Lyco will have more delusions about his place in the society, his image, his success at work. The animus or the sword at work is here. And we have delusion that he neglected his duty. Delusions he is unfortunate. And the core delusion of Lyco Podium is that everything will vanish. It is very different from Lacazis, but you can differentiate on the basis of the core delusion. You have Lacazis 
who's injured by her surroundings, and you have Lycopodium, who thinks everything will vanish. On another look, Platina and Lycopodium end up being queen and false guru. Why false guru? Because the real guru serves people. He does not insist on being served by the others. And Lachesis is a very tormented soul. I mean this in a sense that she does not understand why her often foolish and out of control passion is not returned with an equal show of love. And Lachesis and Platina are both spiritual remedies, uh, thus act and talk as though they were under superhuman control. Platina is a little hard, of course, and uh, even a little more crude in her actions than Lachesis, who's much more easily influenced by being mesmerized. Lachesis thinks she's somebody else, and in the hands of a stronger power, and she acts like she is charmed and cannot break the spell and all these are delusions you can find in the repertory. Now, to bolster her ego, Lachesis possesses uh, something else, something that makes her superior to Platina and Lycopodium, and that is her loquacity. Like a podium speech is more dictatorial towards uh, his inferiors. We have rubric uh, abusive and insulting towards subordinates, often with anger, from any contradiction. And this brings to mind Nux Vomica, who, like, like a podium, employs every possible means for his ambition, and also Platina. At the same time, like a podium speak differently in the presence of his boss. Lyco is a flatterer because he knows he needs to be on good terms with the boss in order to reach that coach's position of power. The platinum's loquacity can be equally abusive and insulting, especially a child towards its parents, and that is also like a podium. Now, don't forget we're talking about Lachesis. Lachesis can be a braggart, can be a boaster, and squanders uh, her money through ostination. And this is also the Ratrum album. And this is a part of her beauty which takes the form of an ice maiden rather than a warm, sympathetic figure. In the deeper pathology of Platina, she desires to be silent she is indisposed to talk. But Lachesi speaks in differing ways, depending on her state of pathology. When in balance, Lachesi is a witty and a brilliant conversationalist. There is quick comprehension and mental activity with almost prophetic perception. Lachesis stops you in the middle of your sentence, so she knows the rest already. Even worse for you, she knows the question before you have asked it. And his ideas are abandoned, and no sooner does one idea occur in Lachesis than a number of others follow in a quick succession. In three words, active, lively and vivacious. And usually her speech reflects all this. Lachesis wants to talk all the time. Lachesis has inclination to be communicative, has vivid imagination and extremely impatient at tedious and dry things. She has the most extraordinary loquacity, making speeches in very select phrases but jumping off to the most heterogeneous subject. So one word leads into the midst of another story, and this loquacity is marked by a rapid change of subject. She jumps abruptly from one idea to another. And in Platinum we have a wandering speech. Platinum repeats the same things 
Lacus jumps from one topic to another. And true to her snake nature, her tongue will be used to hurt in a very refined but cynical and critical way. Lacus can hurt you with a word while having a smile on the face. And now we are sure that this loquacity is of an eminently psychotic nature, indicating clearly to the homeopath that Lacus is a very psychotic remedy. And any compensation of Lacus will be an exaggerated one, with an intensity to it that matches the remedy's sanguine nature. At least initially, for the more stable lacuses, the loquacity is an outlet of a rather positive nature, as they can use it to be good lawyer, good politician, teacher, preacher. And loquacity also comes in letter or email form. If you as a homeopath always get a lengthy answer to your follow-up questions, all about small complaints, but very detailed and always urgent, pleading and self-absorbed, you can call that loquacity. So their messages are blow-by-blow -blow accounts hurled at the homeopath as they are consumed with anticipation, anxiety and restlessness. And out of balance, Lacus really suffers from the delusion that she is doomed and in her panic, reason goes quickly out of the door. And here it resembles arsenicum.